If you're looking to upgrade your gravel bike, then look no further. We have a collection of the best ways to make your bike faster, your riding gnarlier, and even your tires a bit more puncture resistant. But before I get to that, why not subscribe? Over 80% of you aren't, and it really helps the channel. Okay, let's put some bounce in your bungee. This is gonna be so controversial, but one of the best upgrades that you can make to your gravel bike is a suspension fork. Why? Because it will make your bike much nicer to ride over gnarly terrain. It will probably give you more confidence when doing so and the juicy result is that you will be faster. Not everything after all has to make your bike lighter or more aero to improve your speed. A popular upgrade for long distance riders and racers alike has been the Lauf Grit. This carbon fibre fork utilises 12 glass fibre leaf springs which provide up to 30 millimetres of travel. These really come into play when the road gets more choppy, killing road buzz and harsher hits. The KS GTC comes out as a good lower priced option at $600. The new 40mm or 50mm Travel Fox 32 taper cast gravel fork builds on the brand's outgoing 32AX. NPR's Baxter fork is available in two configurations with 40mm and 60mm of travel, both with tyre clearance for 700 by 50mm tyres. The RockShox Rudy Ultima Explore has generous clearance, allowing you again to fit 700 by 50mm tyres, and the fork is available in 30 and 40mm travel options. Well, there's plenty of options out there, but if you're unsure, hang on to our big group test later this year. There's just another reason to subscribe. All right, so you want some extra front end comfort, but you don't like the look of those forks. I get you, why not get a suspension stem? The history of elastomer-based suspension systems on bikes isn't littered with success, but the shock stop system is a truly effective ride smoothing solution with almost no practical downsides. It works in a subtle way, squashing sudden bumps and effectively smoothing incessantly rough surfaces. There's just 10 to 20 millimeters of travel here, which isn't much compared to the forks, and how much you get depends on your hand position, but it works really well. Having your backside and lower back caked in cold, muddy water is not a nice way to start a ride, but regular mud guards might not be a practical solution for your gravel bike. Step forward the Ass Savers Win Wing Gravel, that is difficult to say, an impressively light clip-on mud guard that provides full backside protection from about the knees up. It attaches in seconds and is easily transferable between bikes. What's more, it can be set for an amount of tire clearance that works for you and your bike, making it especially useful for gravel riding. Don't expect the same coverage as a set of full mudguards, but as an affordable, easy to fit option in a well thought out design, the Ass Savers is a very good option indeed. It's also just 25 quid, so it's not gonna break the bank. If you want to maximize the puncture protection in your tubeless tires, inserts are a brilliant upgrade for those of you that love to charge head first into a technical section at full speed, because obviously that's a great idea. Inserts are primarily there to protect your rims, so when you go a bit heavy into a tree root that you missed, the tire insert will soften the blow. Stopping the tire from whacking into the rim can help you to avoid punctures, meaning your puncture risk is reduced to pokey things that want to stick in your tires. But that's not all an insert can do. Some can offer some sidewall support, making burping air less of a risk. Those factors combine to allow you to run lower tire pressures, giving extra cornering grip and a comfier ride. Oh, and a side benefit that we hope you never have to use, an insert will allow you to limp home on a catastrophically punctured tire, such as a slashed sidewall. You certainly won't be getting any comms, but then it will get you home much faster than if you have to walk. If you want to conquer technical climbs, then fitting easier gears will help you to keep the pedals turning. Now, there's nothing wrong with having to walk up a climb, it happens to the best of us, but I won't lie, being able to ride super techie climbs in front of your friends is pretty cool. It's 
Fram, Campagnolo and Shimano all have excellent options available and MicroShift would be worth a look too. Now SRAM's Apex Eagle offers a huge 10 to 52 tooth cassette, while Shimano GRX Unstoppable boasts a 10 to 51. Yes, a new group set is a big upgrade, but pair either of those with a 40 tooth one by chainring and you'll get up anything. Nothing ruins a ride more than a puncture. Well, actually crashing isn't great, but stick with me. If the sealant is struggling to plug the hole in your tire, a quick way to fix it is a Stam's dart tool or something similar. Tubeless repair tools all work in a roughly similar way. You're basically shoving a bit of material into the hole to give the sealant a fighting chance of plugging the gap. There are a few good options that many of the team here use. Felix and Robin both swear by a Dyna plug, for example, but I really like the speed of the Stam's dart. With two plugs ready to go, it's super fast to use, and if I have more than two punctures on a single ride, I just say that's super bad luck. Even with the fastest tubeless plug deployment, you'll have to put air back into your tire. Now a big volume pump from the mountain bike world would be a good idea. A road bike mini pump might be small and lightweight, but you might struggle to fill wider gravel tires with such a diddy pump. Dropper posts are an easy way to make your gravel bike more rad so that you can ride terrain once thought to be accessible only to the bouncy bikes. That's mountain bikes for the uninitiated. If you don't know, a dropper post is a seat post that can be lowered via the push of a lever, typically located on the handlebar, to allow you to drop the height of your saddle. This adjustment gives the rider a greater range of movement over the bike, which comes in especially useful when riding trickier off-road trails. There are four posts that we highly rate, so if you want to know more about them, I'll leave a link to the buyer's guide in the description. Oh, and if you want us to do a big video group test on gravel dropper posts, then give this video a like. 1000 gets it done. For many riders, exploring areas local to you is the best thing about gravel riding. I have to say that an away day is also really fun, but I don't like getting lost. So a big cycling computer like Wahoo's Element Roam or Garmin's Edge 1040 is a great upgrade in my eyes. The big screen size that you get with these devices helps to make maps easier to read while on the move. For me, this improves the flow of a ride as I'm not having to stop all the time to check where I'm going. So, you've taken up gravel riding. This instantly means that you'll need to document everything on Instagram. It's a lot easier to pull your phone out of a cargo pocket than a jersey pocket. So make those hashtag gains and get some cargo shorts. Joking aside, cargo shorts are actually quite good. Yes, the leg pockets give you easier access to ride snacks and your phone, but they also free you from riding in a cycling jersey. A lot of the time gravel is about the vibes and a simple t-shirt can be comfier on long days. So what used to go in your jersey pockets can now live in the pockets of your shorts. I'll link some of Bike Radar's favorites in the description. So there we have a collection of brilliant upgrades for gravel riding. If you've already made any of these upgrades and you want to share your experiences, get commenting. If you haven't already done so, then subscribe to the channel. Like I said earlier, over 80% of you aren't, and it really helps us. It's also free, so why not? If you've been pondering a tire change and want to know whether wider gravel tires are faster, then I suggest you go and watch this video.